Lesson 6-4, Inequalities for One Triangle. These are just things about triangles that you never really thought about. For example, if a person hands me two sticks and one of them is five inches long, and the other stick is seven inches long, what's the biggest and smallest triangles I can make? And you've probably never thought about this. I see this on the ACT every now and then. It's not that big a deal. But if I go over here for smallest, and over here for biggest, think about it a second. If you tried to make the biggest triangle you could, what would it look like? Well, I would take the 7 as the base and the 5 at the smallest angle I could put it at. We have a seven inch here and a five inch here and then the remainder would be this big long piece like that and the biggest I could probably make would be something like 11.9 inches just just less than 12 and over here the smallest I would take the seven inch like that and take the five inch and put it at the smallest possible angle and then I'd have a final piece there that would be two inches long so, given a 5 and a 7 inch, the length would be greater than 2 inches, but less than 12 inches. Less than, not equal to, less than, and over here, greater than, not equal to, greater than 2 inches. So, that's one of the things we talk about with triangle inequalities. It's, uh, it's really more of a problem-solving thing. It'd be a great problem to hand out in class and just let you guys have a, a fun time with it. But no big deal. So smallest, um, if you have two pieces, A plus B, um, let's say the third side is C. Then, um, a minus B must be greater than C, and for the larger side, A plus B must be smaller than C. So that's basically what we showed up here, and uh, I wouldn't get into the formulas at all. I would just look at it and use a little bit of common sense. Requires playing with the problems a little bit, but really not too bad. So another one, uh, which one of these triangles has uh, a base angle that's bigger than the other one, and which base angle is bigger? This could be anything, we'll call it 14 for now, it doesn't really matter. And this could be 14, 12, and 13. And we go with R, S, T, and we'll use RST again, even though they're different triangles. Well, hopefully you remember an isosceles triangle. Measure of angle R equals measure of angle T. And over here, measure of angle R and measure of angle T. Which one's bigger? And hopefully you look at this and say, well, if 12 and 12 gives me equal angles, the one across from the bigger side, since this angle has to kind of open up the sides to allow for the bigger 13, this should be a greater angle over here. Angle R is greater than angle T. This is not that hard to figure out. Very common sense stuff. Just takes a little practice. So that's what this theorem says. If one side of a triangle is longer than a second side, the angle opposite is longer than the angle on that side too. So let's just give yourself a big old triangle here. Six, eight, ten, A, B, C. What's the biggest angle? What's the next biggest angle? What's the smallest angle? I believe I put this on the final exam, and I also put this on a, a couple of tests, and they're, they're good problems. Make you think a little bit. So I would say that uh, across from the biggest side, 
that's B, that's going to be the biggest. Then the next biggest side is A. And then the next biggest side is C. So angle C will be the smallest. Angle B will be the greatest. And these are all theorems. So they can be proved with inequalities, but I'm not going to bore you with the details. Just try to get you to think a little bit about these things and how they work. So what's next? Hopefully you know. The converse. What am I going to give you this time instead of sides? What do I give you? I hope you said angles. So, I don't know. Sixty, seventy, fifty. So, what's the biggest side? Yeah, let's use different letters. Biggest side, can we cross the biggest angle? DF's the biggest. EF's the next biggest. DE is the smallest. That's it. The last two theorems here are quite simply useless, but they follow because they're corollaries. And if you can figure out how they're related, good for you. Perpendicular segment is the shortest segment from the point to the line. Well, you know, here's the line. Here's the point. And what they're saying is, is the shortest is at 90 degrees. Well, yeah, because if I draw any triangle, 90 degrees is going to be the biggest angle. You can't have any other angles that are bigger than 90. So that's going to be longest side. And this is going to be shorter, not the shortest, but shorter than the longest side. So that has to be the shortest distance. We've actually already done this before. We proved it lots of different ways. And this is the same thing, just in a plane. And it's the same thing if you just draw a point... Go down and draw another triangle. Go right angle. Exact same thing. Exact same thing. Now, none of this is too bad, but they're great problems coming because you have to use your brain to think. You can't just slap it out there and pray that things work out. So use your, your knowledge and work it out. Think about things a little bit. Let's see what you get. Good luck.